Okay, good afternoon, guys. Uh, my name is Steve Ruffley. Welcome to this live trading clinic. Um, what we'll do is we'll go through what we're going to run through today, as always. Uh, remember, it's an open forum. This. We're going to focus on the usual thing, things that go through. We're going to go through, in particular, again, the euro dollar today. But any products you want to go through, any thoughts you have on the technicals, the fundamentals, again, just ask me any questions. You know, we've got 45 minutes today for you to ask me anything you want about the market, about trading, about technical analysis, fundamentals. Um, so, again, it's an open forum. Anything you want, just please do ask me. So, for our start, as always, you need to read the risk warning. This spread bets against CD trading both carry a high level of capital, results in losses that exceed your initial deposit. It's made up suitable for everyone, so please ensure you're pulling this under risk involved. The information and comments provided herein under no circumstances are considered not for solicitation to invest. Nothing herein to ensure his investment advice. The information provided is please be accurate to the data is produced. Again, education only, guys. Content of the webinar is personal opinion of the moderator at knowingtrade.com. Content does not constitute financial investment or tax advice. In general, common does not accept any liability for the content coming from during the session. So what we're going to cover. As always, live charting analysis. I'll show you my multiple time frame trading setup system. It's how I've traded for, for years. It's the only way you can trade, to be honest. Um, and if you set your charts up this way, you're not just going to get better trading signals, but you can trade multiple markets. So you don't have to be a FTSE swing trader. You can be a value hunter in any product. It's just data, okay? Charts are just data. Everything moves. Everything has technical analysis. Everything has some sort of fundamental driver. So, again, if you can look at charts in any kind of reasonable way, you can, you can trade anything. It doesn't matter what it is. So, fundamental analysis, not too much out at the minute. Obviously, the markets have reacted to, uh, to Mark Carney and uh, what Bernanke have said recently about the, uh, you know, the, the quantitative easing, the stimulus, uh, and the promise by Carney there to keep rates in the UK low till 2016, or in, at least until... Unemployment is back on track. Not quite sure entirely if I agree with that, that stance and uh, you know that kind of sheepish Fed following, but what can you do? He's the boss, not me. If there's anything decent, I'm going to put some live real money trades on. Um, I've not done so many lately, uh, but I've done two in two days uh, that I've tweeted, and uh, I'm up 8% um, in, in in two trades. So I'm probably going to start something fairly new. I'm going to speak to FX Street and the guys. I might start the £5,000 challenge, where I just put £5,000 in my account, and uh, I'll just trade it. Okay, so we'll just have live trading calls, uh, do some analysis, and we'll see something good. I'll trade it and see if I can double my money in the uh, the next couple of months. Because uh, that's the only real, real way people are going to believe the analysis, believe the, you know, the lessons that I teach about trading is by backing up with a live account and then trading. So, again, just ideas, but we'll see. So a couple of questions before we start. Uh, Roy Keane, why are you using Forex Pro instead of MT4, instead of Integrated MT4? Right. Okay. Well, I'm using FX Pro just because it was the first one that I um, downloaded when I was testing my software. So all this set we see is running. It's been running for a while. So I'm just using that because I am, because it's, it's set up the way I like it, and I don't want to change it over to, to anything else. Intertrade have only really recently come to, uh, to, to MetaTrader and only recently updated a full suite of products. So uh, I will probably change it over at some point. Who knows? I might even change to a different system. Uh, right now, it's just for education only. Uh, it's just charts. It's just that's all it is. I trade an Intertrader. I have an account in Intertrader. I just use the charts for, uh, for analysis. Okay, John's just saying, uh, holiday season for trading, so it's a bit slow. It's a bit slow, John, but... You know, the money's to be made. I mean, let's take the markets today. You know, we've seen a fairly positive sweep across the board. SMI has tried to push down, but hasn't. Uh, you know, big moves in the Dow. S&P strong. Um, Eurostock's trying to hit this 2822 key level. DAX has continued strong. And the FTSE. So the reason why I took my FTSE trade, which I, I tweeted about 10 o'clock this morning, was that we were trading down here at the time. Okay. Um, we, with these Fibonacci levels going to come into play, but the Nikkei was just solid, you know, kind of trading around here. The S&P had rejected all these lows and was bouncing off 1688. And everything else was just kind of ranging. Small kind of ranging green candle in stocks. Small kind of green um, trending daily candle. So what it did is instead of, um, you know, the foot was like this. So very, very, you know, small towards here, just outside of this trend line. So what you do, an example of multiple time frame trading, put that in your hourlies. So daily, green. You know, this was red, but coming back, back green, green. Okay, and then the Nick I was going nowhere. So you do change change your um, FTSE chart onto the hourlies. 
and have a look what this was doing. So the, the put she was trading down here, this big move, okay, which was short into yesterday, because the thing I tweeted yesterday was, got this really big, nice, um, symmetrical triangle. Market's moving sideways, comes down, resistance, resistance, resistance. The breakup on the back of Carney's comments, bang, bang, straight back into the range, all the way back down, the market breaks through. Okay, can't hold out so hard on the hour, it comes back into the range. Eventually, it pops back through, the overall trend continues, the market moves down. Okay, so what the market then was the first point it looks to hit back to, well, the 0.0% FIB, okay, on that one big overextended move that we saw that took us outside the lower and upper bands of support. Okay, so the first point it wanted to test was this 100, this 0, 0.0. So what I suggested was the market would probably get, and I called it to a pip, yeah, and the market would get to the 23.6% retracement, 6512 spot 6, okay, so that's 60 ticks. But you have to know where to enter. So what I was doing is I was waiting for it to bounce off this to act as support and resistance. So I was getting long after the 0, 0.0 here. So I got long here. Market bounced back down. Come all the way back down here. Bought some more. Market came up. Broke through. Again, came all the way down in this candle. But I thought it's three attempts it's had to make the lower low. So it wouldn't. So bought some more here. Averaging quite heavily. And I'm waiting for the market here to break. And in that candle, okay, it it broke. I took all my profit out just before it hit the 23.6 out here. So I made all the money on the break down here, and I got out here. So very, very safe trade, okay? Two, three ticks offside. Sorry. Two, three ticks offside to make 16 ticks. And then down here, I let the market, and I got long and averaged in between here. So I've got averaged in between 10 ticks. Didn't really go offside that much, but was offside when I was just trending down in here. So I averaged in. But again, finite stop down here. But not really much offside positions. When we broke through, yeah, made 24 ticks on an average position. So that's about 40 ticks in total uh, on two trades. So that's with my five, five grand capital I put in the other day, up 8% in two trades. So that's just using basic trend lines, Bollinger Bands, Fibonacci. Nothing more from that. Okay, so yeah, as I agree with John, the trading is slow. But when you get the momentum into the market, it moves a lot quicker. So it was a slow grind up here. When the market, bang, decided this trend level would come into play, market's going up. Market comes down to this trend level, yeah, market's going to go back up. So as the first point, it's going to test again, 23.6, continues to have a bullish day, then 38.2, 50%, 61, and eventually the top end of this trade. So again, look on the dailies. You know, look on the daily charts. That's how I start the day every day. What's the market done? Come down aggressively, move back up, ranging, broke out to the upside, broke out to the downside. So the likely trade is it's going to either range or go back up. up. Yep. Because look at all these bottoms. Yeah, all these all these wicks that couldn't bring more sellers into the market. So again, off the back of news, come back down. Market's going to range, range about here, and maybe continue the, the uptrend. If it doesn't, come back into the range, hit 6393 and below. But, I mean, you can just see, if you set your charts up this way, the S&P is still the biggest market, isn't it? Still the biggest market, drives drives the world, the S&P, the U.S. markets. This is the FTSE uh, for its goal. So, this is the S&P. So, you need to learn your symbols, guys. Okay? I mean, they're different for, they're pretty standard on MetaTrader. But, you know, if you're using things like uh, MetaStock, Reuters, any, any pro instrument, you have to learn that, you know, AUX is gold. You know, you have to understand what these things are. That's what the professional traders use. So, now, EPU is just S&P, okay, so the daily chart. So look how the market's reacted at 1685. Broke through these lower levels here, but big time, did it reject it? So we're still, you know, very bullish the US, and the market's had three days of selling, but we're already retracing a good 50% of that, that down move. So you see, again, things like the SMI I'll look at, but don't really trade. The fact that it's got a gap here is interesting, but that's about it. The SMI does do nothing else for me. Um... Dow, always good to look at. You know, again, just confirm the market strong. Rejection, rejection of the lower Bollinger Band. Uh, Euro stocks uh, up here and the DAX down here, obviously good. Again, look at these levels. Time and time again, I call these levels on my commentary in Reuters and Bloomberg. Uh, and I tweet them. So you have to watch for them. You have to, okay, because they work. If you'd have bought the daily down here at 28245 in the DAX, that's free money. You don't really go offside and you make 99 ticks. What more, more can I say? Here's the law of the market, 8217. 
Okay, two opportunities to buy here and make money. Resistance. Yeah, opportunities here to sell at 8359 and come back down. So, you know, if the market breaks up, it's going to break 8359 and then probably 8476. If it goes lower, 8217, it's going to come back to this trend line here. So probably hit it around 8316. Okay, daily charts. Yeah, so you want to zoom in, see what's happening on the hourlies. Same kind of thing. Market sells off aggressively. Finds great support here. 8245. Hits the uh, moving average. Yeah. Hits the Bollinger Band. Doesn't go back to the moving average. Green. Okay. So you take your Fibonacci of that. Again, if you trade signal, start the down move here. Goes to a low here. 80% of the time, the market hits 50%. Okay. So look. 23.6. 38.2. Acts in support resistance. 50%. Perfect. So what's it going to do? It's either going to break through the 50% of the DAX and come back towards the moving average, or it's going to find support on here and go back towards the 61.8 and 8359. That's how you use Fibonacci. Okay? So you can leave that Fibonacci on the DAX now for, for days. Days and, you know, days a week. See how this move here, this really, really sharp down move, will fix the market in the next two weeks. So guarantee these Fibonacci levels will come into play. So we close significantly above the 50%. On the DAX, yeah, at 8.328, then the market's going to go oh, 20 ticks up here, 30 ticks up here, maybe 75, maybe 100 ticks in the next two weeks of trading. Okay, simple as that. And that's your hourlies, okay? So you want to look on your hourlies. So again, just minimize that. Keep keep an eye on it. Flip back to your dailies. So you've got a fib in a fib. You know, that's, 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 that's quite acceptable. You know, having a Fibonacci and a Fibonacci. Don't make it too confusing, but I understand it. And I know that Fib, that small Fib's the hour. So I have to do is zoom in to see how that, that works. So we zoom in. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, 50% on the hour leave. Zoom back out to your dailies. Big Fibs. Yeah, they're, they're the overall targets. Okay, so my Fib would work better from a higher level, you think? Right. Well, possibly, but... I'll stick to my, the way I do it, because I've had 10 years in the markets and I've made more money than you have, so I'll stick to what I know. But yes, you know, if you want to look at the market in a different way and use your fibs in a higher time frame in a different way, of course, that's how you want to use it. But I'm just telling you how I do it. I've already got a higher time frame fib here, from here to here. That's on the monthlies. This is an hourly fib, okay? So the monthly fib I can use on any time frame as well. The smaller time frame is just this one. So that's just for the next week of trading based upon these, you know, last five hours of trading. Yeah? The monthly ones, these big long ones, they're from monthly levels. So they're my overall targets. So it's the different time frame trading. Okay? So the big levels are off the monthly, so they're your overall target. The five candles I've done on that FIB, on the hourly, that's my next few days worth of trading. They might only be relevant for the next few days. And if they're not, you know what we do? We just take it off. You know, we get rid of it. But until, you know, until they, they've become to cease to be useful, you leave them on. They don't take a lot of, you know, space on your chart. And you can see the Fibonacci is drawn. So the long Fibonacci lines, high levels, yeah, small Fibonacci's, low levels. So they don't work and they're no use. You just take them off your chart. So same thing in the FTSE. You know, you've got your high level time frames here, your dailies. Flick through to your hourlies and you could do a Fibonacci from here to here. And that will show you how the smaller time frames are going to work. But as you can see, this is working quite nicely. The longer we close above this trend line here, yeah, the more likely are we to test these Fibonacci's and they're going to be resistance. Okay? Simple as that. So that's just an, uh, you know, an overview of you know, the, the, the stock markets right now, you know, the main indices. Let's go to the euro dollar. We can have a look at all the different currencies. So anything else you want to talk about, uh, you know, let me know. So euro dollar, again, what we're looking at is higher time frame trading. Okay, so we can see in the euro dollar on the monthly charts, we're really trading you know, between key levels of support and resistance. The Bollinger Bands are acting quite nicely. Look at the moving average, acts as nice monthly support, reject, come down, support, bounce up. So we say that really on the charts here, the, uh, the next spot on the upside for the um, euro dollar is definitely going to be. One three five four five. Okay, that's where it wants to hit on the upside. So we've got a good, you know, we've got a good amount of distance. You know, a good two hundred ticks on the monthly chart for that to 
to, to creep up. On the weeklies, again, look, market's still very, very bullish. Again, you know, one, two, three, four, five green candles on the weeklies, showing us again the market wants to move up. The dailies, look, same pattern. Moving average, acting as support, moving towards the top of the Bollinger Bands, will break higher. Okay, let me just go back to some questions. Um, Forex Galson, you mainly fib a meaningful move rather than the extreme of a high and low. Yes, absolutely, Forex Gal. You hit the nail on the head there. But remember, you have to understand what you're using Fibonacci for. Fibonacci is just, if you're using Fibonacci on a high time frame, you know, on a big move, you know, say over 10 months or 20 weeks, then that's a big period move. So you're just looking for work. Something's gone in one direction for a long period of time where it's going to come back to in you know the foreseeable future if you're using fibonacci on a smaller time frame like the hourly well that's going to come into play on what, what's going to happen in the in the next trading hour trading day trading week because you're using intraday trading data so any quick move that happens in the day like announcement or a figure or some uh, you know some unexpected news you know the fibonacci is just another good way of seeing how that small move will behave when it retraces or continues. So Fibonacci is a real, it's a tool you can use, but you have to use it in the right way, and you have to use it in a way that you understand, okay? I wasn't being flippant when I said that, you know, I'll use my way and I'll stick to it. You know, I will. I don't know any other way to plot Fibonacci, okay? You can do it from, like everybody else may teach you in these books, but how many professors out there are out there trading the markets every day and making money? None of them. They're just selling books because they've got a PhD in trading psychology and maths, okay? What can I do? You know, I, I can't be that person. I don't have a PhD. But what I've done is consistently made money for a decade in the market. So what I'm telling you is the tools to use, but you have to understand how you interpret them with your style of trading. Okay? Steve Ruffley and Trader Maker and Interest Trader are not about telling you how to trade. And that's why I don't give signals. My messages on Twitter are fairly generic. Here's a good place to go long. Here's a target. Where you get into the trade is where you get into the trade. Okay, that's down to you. Only you will have the confidence. And Fibonacci, again, like I said here, another prime example, an hourly move. Okay, hourly move on the on the euro dollar. Okay, so we're looking for the market in a, in a bull move, and it's extending. Yeah, and the Fibonacci comes into play because we've closed that side the Bollinger Band and made a higher high. So we're looking for the market now to come back to that key 50%. If it doesn't, then the market is going to continue higher, isn't it? Because the, on the small all hourly breakout, the 50% is the target for profit taking. But if it doesn't get to that 50%, that means all the bulls are still long and going to push the move higher. So it pushes higher, where's it going to go? The next logical point of resistance is 1 spot 33849. Above that, 134151. If it rejects these moves higher and closes below the 50%, then it wants to get down here to the 100%, to this key level 133353, which ties in with the FID level at 1 spot 333 all the three. It goes below that, the lower Bollinger Band, which ties in with 133209. And the more things that tie in together, the better it is. Okay? There's no surprise that the lower end of the Bollinger Band is near a daily point of interest. No coincidence that you know, the top of the Bollinger Band is near a, a daily point of interest. Okay? These are extremes of the market. So when you look at these extremes, you're trying to pick out you know, the tops and the bottoms. And the Bollinger Bands are a great way of doing this. So Bollinger Bands here, three times, try to get lower, get low to this level down here, 132667, but can't, can't close outside the Bollinger Band. So you're buying the extremes of the market. And once you do that, everybody else uses the Bollinger Bands and other techniques to get in. So you're looking for these extremes to catch. Look, if you go long here, you can't help but make money. Short here, can't help but make money. Long here, make money. Short here, make money. When you start to see a pattern of how I trade, I'm using the Bollinger Bands on different time frames, but mainly the hourlies to pick out the tops and bottoms of markets, tying them in with a key level of interest. And when they get back in that, I buy more. Yeah, I average into my trade positively because I know everybody else is too frightened to get involved in the extremes in case suddenly this market breaks all the way down here. And occasionally you do get, get caught out and overextending markets. But this is a percentage trade. You know, I'm looking 70, 80 percent winners if I just wait and be patient. So if you just set your chart, I mean, I'll, I'll show you. OK, this is the euro dollar here. So if you want to set up euro dollar from scratch, 
this is how you do it. This is how quick it is. Okay? I've just got a save template to make it look black and white. Okay? That's a two-second job. Okay? That's all it is, but it looks nice. So you've got daily candles. Okay? So daily candles, what's going to happen? First thing you do, Bollinger Bands. 20 period, two standard deviation on the close. Don't make it any more complicated than that. Okay. Great. So we've got a little bit of information now. Market, mm-hmm, rejected. Rejected the moving average, so we're definitely moving higher. So these are the highs up here. Simple straight line. Key point, double top, market move down. So what we're going to do, go Fibonacci. We'll down move aggressively starting back here. Got as low as here. Okay, so where's the key point in the market where the market's going to reverse? 50%. Thank you very much. So the 50%, yeah, the market... It right, okay, it looked above the 50% and the 61.8, came back down, but found good support on the 50%. What a surprise. Market then moves up, or is it one to test the 61.8? Okay, so we draw another line, 61.8. 61.8, great. Do you know what we can do now? Take the Fibonacci off. Okay, so we don't need any more information than that. These are daily levels. Okay, daily Fibonacci. 50, yep, 61, top of the market here. We don't even need to know what 100% is. Okay, what, what else can we glean from this daily chart? Hmm, could we draw? Well, no, that's too much. That's too steep, you see. You want a 45-degree angle, so that's no use to you. So you've got three trend lines from using Fibonacci and Bollinger Bands. Okay, what else can we use from that? Okay, nothing, that's fine. So go to your hourly. Yeah, so what's your hourly telling you? Okay, I was, I was telling you bond bands are coming close together. So we're either going to see a breakout as high as here. Yeah, that level we drew on the on the dailies. Or the market's going to come back. And where's it going to come back? Well, you'd say, realistically, before it goes anywhere, the moving average. Below that, the low end of the Bollinger Band. So let's put them as different lines, different colours. Okay, so you've basically used two studies. Okay, you've used Bollinger Bands on the dailies, Fibonacci on the dailies. Okay, so you've drawn some key lines in. So what are you going to do now? Well, you're going to wait because your dailies don't tell you anything. And unless you've got any hourly levels that you've drawn in the past that might be of interest, what else can you do? I mean, you can sweeten it up. You can insert, you know, other things like uh, what have we got? You know, you've got all these different things. You know, you've got, let's, let's do some, let's do, uh, where is it? You know, just do an RSI. 14 periods, another very, very easy, um, you know, subject to use. Again, understand where the market looks to be overbought and oversold. So overbought, above 70. Oversold, below 30. Okay, so there are your levels. So if you think... The market's going to break up. It needs to break through the 70 to push the market above here. Yeah, and it's going to push up. It's going to get to here and then come back down. But remember, the longer it trades above 70, the more overbought it is and the more it wants to come down. So maybe what you want to do is let the market extend up to here, 50 ticks. Yeah, let the RSI get up to 75, 80, 85, whatever. And then once it gets to here, sell back down to these levels. So... Again, it's entirely up to you how you can trade or how what indicators you use. I mean, that's just basically four lines, four lines. And again, you have to be patient. But if you do that in every chart, OK, on every daily or you can't do it in every daily. OK, I mean, that, that, that's wrong. If you do that on six products, OK, you're going to end up with a nice trading screen. OK, OK, so that that's that in the in the. Uh, in, in the, that's a euro dollar from scratch. Okay, so anyone could do that chart. You saw how quick I did it. I just used three studies really, and just did them quickly, and just did them at points of interest. So I wouldn't get involved in that market until here or here. Yeah, I'd be buying here for a bounce, I'd be selling here for a dip. Simple as. Okay, but if you do that on the daily on six charts, you're going to end up with something like this. You know, or even eight charts. Yeah, I mean, this one looks terrible. I mean, again, that's just too much data. But on the other charts, you know, it looks fine. 
one second, so a bit of a male function the charts in. Yeah, on the other charts, it looks all right. You know, these are all basically just higher time frame levels on lower time frame charts. So again, you know, you've got your euro dollar here. So you've already done the analysis for that. But you do the same on the S&P, the same in the Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar again, another great one. Everyone has talked about this massive downtrend that we've seen. And we have seen a massive downtrend on the dailies. But look on the hourlies. Yeah, the markets behave really well with the Bollinger Bands. So again, it's rejected this down move here, this down channel. Found ultimate support at 0 0.88700 and spiked back up. So again, you look for the bottoms on the Bollinger Bands. One, two, three, four final attempts to move lower. Close, 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 close around the Bollinger Band, then the market moves up. Market moves up, moving average, you made 37 ticks. Top end of the Bollinger Band, you made 100 ticks. Where does it come back down to? Moving average, can't close below it. Hourly charts, Just remember, let the hours close. Comes back up here, makes higher highs. Okay? Again, you know, it's... Daily chart is here. Okay, so it looks messy, but you can see this massive downtrend. Also, the monthly... You know, the overall trend back here in 2009 was a massive bull move. Consolidation and lots of selling. Weekly, sideways movement, a lot of selling. Dailies, you know, leading up to that, a lot of selling. But look at this, reversal candle here. Massive hammer, yeah, at the bottom. So what do you see after that? One, two, three days of trading. Green trading. So what we're doing, you know, we're looking for the market to, to come back into the main range and either continue upwards and get back into this mid-range, or make new lows. So when you look at the hourlies, you know, zoom in, you know, the market's going to find lots of support and resistance, you know, above and below, you know, these points here. So we're either going to break 0 0.9866, okay, because that's another Fibonacci out of the Bollinger Band, okay, and if it does, it's going to hit here at 91, maybe get here as 91.8, but if it doesn't, then it's going to hit the 50%. Okay, it's going to get back to 9090 9, and below that all these lower levels. So if you're having your chart set up in this way, you can just pick out opportunities. And again, it's Fibonacci. You know, again, it's not perfect, but it's hourly. Three times to make a, a triple top here. Then the market comes down in one candle, can't hit the 50%, but it hits the 38.2. Look, a double bottom then continues the up move. So realistically, for me, the market's going to find support on the 23.6. And the Aussie dollar today is going to make some higher high. That's what it looks like to me. Because it's rejected the 50%, rejected the 38.2. So it's going to bounce off the 23.6 and get back to these levels up here. Okay. So the euro dollar that I started from scratch, well, I've just closed that. So it's going to be a real pain in the ass to do that again. But we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll do it again at the end, okay? So you want to see the same? No, it's all right. We'll do the same in gold. So this is gold, okay? Monthly messy chart. Massive, massive bull move. Look at this, going back to, uh, you know, 2004. Monthly data, massive bull move. Markets come back. But again, I mean, you, you can see the key 50% just here, yeah, that are during the monthlies. Now that's been hit and bounced off. So gold seems to be going a little bit short-term bullish. You can see the same here. Massive sell-off. Bang, one, two, you know, two weeks of, of buying in the gold, but reds, difficult on these charts because, the, you know, these are not look, meant to be viewed. You know, these are meant to be, you know, my background data. So the dailies, again, you can see the market, again, waves, made lows, but again, is in mid-range. So in the hourlies, yeah, it was just a lot of technical data on gold. Just because it's been so choppy, you know, it's made lots of highs and lows. So I'll tell you what we'll do, for argument's sake, let's... Um, Let's do gold from, from, from scratch, okay? Okay, gold from scratch. So, what do we do? Start with the monthly chart, okay? Let's, uh, let's do it as you always do. High to low, for all them people out there that just, you know, finite things. This is gold on a monthly highest point to lowest point, yeah, of, of, of the recent kind of, well, okay, no, no, no. If you want to do it as a truth, Fibonacci then. Let's do it from the start of the up move is, is here. The ah. Sorry. The start of the up move, I guess. 
where, where does that really start to gain momentum? It starts to gain momentum here, okay, on the monthly. That's what I'd say the real momentum, that volume starts to come in. So we do a Fibonacci from here to the top here. Okay, so that's what I'll take from the Fibonacci. Anything else I want to put in, I'll probably put in some key levels. So I'll put in key high here, key low here. What else? That seems to be, yeah, a nice kind of key indecision in the market. So that's your monthly chart. Go to your weeklies, okay? This is your weekly chart. Right, okay, so we're starting to see how the weeklies time with the monthlies. That's fine, okay? So is any kind of levels we want to particularly take from this? Can't see anything that's particularly overly interesting. So go to the dailies. So dailies, yeah, so we can see the market really is, is how it's acting around about these monthlies, uh, you know, Fibonacci levels. Market moves down, dances along the 23.6 bib, rejects the close above it, sells off. Where does it sell down to? Yeah, well, it goes all the way down. Can't hit the 50, but bunches back to the 38.2. Okay, finds that as nice kind of resistance now. So some buyers come back into gold. So on the dailies, Dance around that monthly level again. Remember that red line? I drew the monthlies. Okay. Rejects a significant close above that. Moves down. Where does it go to? 38.2. Okay. Dances around this. You know, not any big particular moves. Reject, reject, reject. Where does it go down to? 50%. You're starting to see a pattern here. Okay. It breaks through the 50%. Where does it hit? Surprise, surprise. The monthly level I picked out. Remember, I did this in two minutes. Yeah. Bounces off that. Where's the first point it, it bounces back to on the dailies? The 50%. Find support, resistance, bounces back up. So right now, we've taken all this information we've had off the monthly chart, and we're looking at it on the daily chart, and it seems to stack up, doesn't it? So if we've, what have we learned? Well, we're trading below the key levels on the higher time frames, on the shorter time frames. So really, we're looking to sell the highs. So the highs here in, in, the, uh, in gold, we can't get back to the 38.2 in the month with the higher level. So the natural target in gold is here, the 50%. Okay? So the gold's going to get down to 1, 2, 3, 5. Yeah, it wants to do that. It's rejected getting back to the highs. Yeah, lower highs all the time. So it wants to get down here. How it's going to do it? Not quite sure. But you go to the hourly charts. Okay? So you've got your boundaries. You know, if you want, put in your Bollinger Bands. OK, they help for me for, for possible breakouts. So realistically, in gold, you're going to have to pick your decision. So, again, let's draw some levels on the hourlies to make this a bit more kind of user friendly. So I see that as massive resistance. Let's change the color of that because this is short term. Short term resistance. Let's do it as royal blue. Another line here. I see that really as good support. So the market now, what it's going to do, we're on the hourly candles now. You can even bring that down to the 15. Yeah, whatever makes you happy. The 15-minute charts, the market's going to either come down and test 1274. Yeah, if it breaks out, or it's going to hit 1338. Okay, so these are the smaller time frames. Look on the five-minute. Again, these are your targets to go for. And they're all based on your higher time frames. Okay, it doesn't look quite as nice with the bars, does it? How do we change them to candles? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know how we do that. Anyway, it doesn't make any difference. It's, it's the same data. Okay, but what you're looking for now, you know, on the hourly charts, is the market to tell you it's doing one thing or another. Can it get to 1388 uh, on, on, on the hourlies? No, no, it can't for me. So what I'll be doing is I'll be looking for this market to break the upper Bollinger Band, yeah, and then reject a close above it and then move back down to the moving average and back down to this level because it's closer. Okay? Candle button at the top of the screen. Uh, ah, well done. Good. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I mean, again, sorry, I mean, 
I always have my set templates. I very rarely do anything from scratch on uh, MetaTrader anymore. So, yeah, okay, so that's looking a little bit better now. So we're on the hourly candle. So you can see, yeah, these are your upper and lower boundaries based upon your hourlies. Your upper lower boundaries on the higher time frames are here. So the market really has got some way to go, hasn't it? If it's going to hit some of these extremes. Okay, you've got, you know, all the way up here, you know, 100 ticks up here, you know, 56 ticks down here, you know, not so many down here, 16 ticks. But, you know, you've got your boundaries now. You've got your boundaries and the big boundaries. Gold is trading, you know, remember, these are monthly levels we've been looking at, these FIBs. So these are key points. So the market's either going to drift back up to these key points up here and continue, you know, re retracing these losses, or it's going to move down and break through and continue the bear move. Okay? What does anybody think? You know, what does anybody think in gold? Are you saying a good short on gold? Forex gal, is that what you're thinking? Yeah, and if you're thinking a good, good short, then wait. Wait for it to break above the Bollinger Band. I mean, let's let's find some examples with gold. I mean, gold behaves very nicely with the Bollinger Band, doesn't it? No, it's not quite as volatile as currency. But when we break out the upper band of the, of the Bollinger Band, look how it looks to get back in and test the moving average. So gold's in a real sideways movement. I mean, it's not... It's not a pleasant uh, product to trade, to be honest. But when it really goes, I mean, look at these daily candles we're looking at. When it really goes. So if you're looking at the dailies, look, we've rejected the Bollinger Bands here, gone back to the moving average. We've rejected closing at the Bollinger Bands here, so moving average. So your target is down, is here, isn't it? The moving average again. So you could draw that on your charts. Your daily moving average is where the market can get to. So if you look on the hourlies, Look on your hourlies. Where's that line here? Okay. So realistically, if the market's going to continue up, it's going to get another, you know, 10 ticks up or so here to 1308, and it breaks that. It's got a long way to go up. Or I'm in agreement with Forex Gal. What I'd like to see is the market try and extend to here and then sell. Sell back into the range from these levels of 1306. Ah, when you said to wait for the Bollinger Band to be patient for that short, okay. Right. OK. Well, I mean, the, the, the method I use for it, Scal, is always the same. I mean, it, I always start with a daily overview. So, I mean, that looks like a nice chart to me. You know, we've seen the market reject all these highs here. And, you know, again, you saw how we did that. I got the monthly chart on, drew a Fibonacci, drew a couple of lines where I thought there was key kind of, you know, a change of sentiment in the market. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, what you're doing is when you're looking at the dailies, you're looking for the overall boundaries, aren't you? Okay, so you're not necessarily going to trade these levels. These are more levels where you think it's going to get to. So these are your exit points. Okay, so your exit points, really, when you're looking to get a short-term trade, are down here at the 50%. You're not looking to get in at the 50%. That's where the market will get to. So what you're doing is you're looking where the market can get to on the higher time frames, and then when you go to your hourly charts, you're trying to pick an opportunity. And how do you pick an opportunity in the hourly chart? Use the Bollinger Bands. Okay? So every time they reject, close outside the Bollinger Band, what does the market do? Comes down. But you've got to be patient. It won't just hit the upper, upper end of the Bollinger Band and then come all the way down. So you might be looking at a four, five, six hour trade. But look at the risk reward. That's what you have to understand with the hourly chart. Okay? Break outside the Bollinger Band, can't make a higher high. So that you get short here. Okay, you're only making, you know, 40, 50, 60 ticks, but you have to wait one, two, three, four, five, six hours for that to happen and then get out at the right point because then the market then reverses and makes a higher high. So what you're looking for now on the hour is, is gold, yeah, to have rejected the, the upper Bollinger Band again here. So what's his next point that he wants to hit? The moving average. Okay, so you've got two ways to do this. You get short as it comes to the moving average, or you short the moving average, and you expect it to get to the lower end of the Bollinger Band. Yeah, and if it breaks lower end of the Bollinger Band, then your bigger levels come into play down here, and then your other levels down here. So remember, the hour is what's happening right now. So you have to, okay, if you want to pick a smaller time frame, like 15 minutes, that's fine, even more zoomed in. So what has that told you? In the 15 minute chart, one, two, three attempts to break higher in gold, yeah, and have not been able to hold on to it. So the 15-minute chart closes inside the 15-minute Bollinger Band. 
go to your hourly, yeah, see where that relates to. Okay, well, that's probably nearer the moving average. So when you close below that, then you can expect gold to move lower, yeah, from the moving average to here, 60 ticks, and to here, 150 ticks. So you use your smaller time frames for your entry, your bigger time frame for your exit. So bigger time frame, Fibonacci from here to here. So that's what the market's done since 2005. Yeah, a lot of data. So all these levels are key levels on the monthly. Ignore the weekly. Go to the daily. So we're trading between the 38 and the 50% of the monthly. So pretty much 50% of it. So the market from here can go one or two ways. Yeah, based upon the higher time frames. So from the dailies, you go to your hourlies, zoomed in. So all the same lines, remember. But on the hourlies, you're moving between support and resistance here on the hourlies. And if you break these levels, you're going to go to here or here. All right, does that make sense? This is, again, I'm going to go through higher time frame trading on my special monthly webinar on FX Street. This is the only way I know how to trade. OK, so when I say, you know, this is, you know, I draw Fibonacci's my way and I draw Bollinger Bands and, you know, I plot charts this way. It's not because I'm trying to say I'm better or know more. This is the only way I know to trade. I don't know any other way to trade. I've tried everything. I have tried everything. And I've spent hundreds of thousands of pounds trying to find a better way to trade. OK, and I haven't found it. So what I just do is I've made a system that just does all them things for me. So instead of just having one chart. I have eight charts. I can trade anything because it's all the same style and information. Okay? So, again, guys, you know, it's all starting with a higher time frame, cycling through, picking out them points, and then trading up your 15 minutes and your hourly signals in between them boundaries. You know, if you trade that way, guys, you won't go far wrong. So, sorry, guys, a little bit of digression. Now, let me just go back to the uh, euro dollar because that's what I'm meant to be focused on today. So, again, Again, you know, Fibonacci works perfectly. What do we do? Test it back to that 50%. Couldn't close below it in the euro dollar, so the market's going to make new highs. Where's it going to make new highs to? Well, I've told you. 13849. That's the only point I know, logically, the market can get back to. How long will it take to do that? Well, look at the previous candles. You know, well, how long, how far is that to that level? Okay. Ah, it's nothing. 20 ticks. So it's 20 ticks down here. So the market's gone that level of distance in one to four hours. So in the next two or three hours, if it's going to make higher highs, the euro dollar is going to hit one spot three three eight four nine. If it rejects it, look for the close below the fifty percent of that fib. Next target moving average. Next target lower Bollinger Band. So st again, stick to the basic principles, guys. You know, put out a monthly chart, nice and blank. Okay, draw something interesting. Draw two or three key levels of interest where the market's found key support or resistance. If you want to do a, fi a fib, do it. If you don't, don't bother. You know, it doesn't matter. As long as you have the key lines of resistance and support there. Put some Bollinger Bands on and see where the market's trading in the, in the higher time frame Bollinger Bands. And then gradually move it down to the dailies, still picking out these key levels of support and resistance, and then trade it off your hourlies. Okay, that's how you trade. That is it. And that, what I've just shown you, is this. Because this is a monthly chart with the lines of monthly interest on. So we know we're above the bond, oh, a moving average towards the upper end of the bond band. Monthly chart, yeah, showing that we're still probably bullish. Weekly chart, Bollinger Bands again, but weekly Bollinger Bands. Found support on the moving average towards the upper end of the Bollinger Band. Yeah, green, 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 green. Daily, same scenario. So everything on the monthly, weekly and daily is telling me the market wants to go up. So what's the market doing on the smaller time frames? Moving up. But you have to pick the right point. Don't buy the highs, yeah, and get stopped out as it comes lower before it moves higher, yeah? Pick the, the points where the market could turn. Where's it generally going to turn? Around the moving average or around, you know, these key levels of 50%. Okay, so that's how you do it. I have the 5 minute and the 15 minute. Just in case you see a small little candlestick formation or something of interest or like this, red, green. So in 5 minutes, the market's moved all the way down to the pip. We traced it. That's a computer system doing that. Yeah. Market's breaking the lows, so it gets everybody that's long out. Yeah. And there's no coincidence that this candle, yeah, is exactly the same size as an above than this candle. Because that is just a computer system saying everybody's long from the 
bottom here. So get them out short, get them out short, get them out short, get them out short. They know they're going to stop here. Take them a few more ticks, then I'll buy back every single price. Yeah, till everybody gets long, and I'll take my profit. That's how that works. All right. So that's what the short term time frames tell you. Remember, these lines, that's the weekly level of interest. Yeah, daily level of interest. They're just these lines here on your big time frame charts put on smaller time frames. So that's how they look nice. That's how they work. Support, support, support. Bit of resistance becomes support. Resistance comes support. You know, it's, you know, and the, even if they break out, you know, they don't break out for very long. So this market now, it looks like it's going to go higher. Where does it want to hit? 13389 on your hourlies? Well, look at it on your 15 minute charts. Here it is. It breaks these highs here. It's got 20 ticks to go to make a new high. Is it a good place to go long? Yeah, possibly. But I mean, that's your judgment call. Enjoy yourself. You know, some, some other indicators. All the indicators on the, on the clothes are saying it's, it's bullish, but everything else is saying negative. So maybe everybody thinks the market is due a sell off. So if we push up in the short term, we'll get all the short term. Yeah, maybe think of it that way. Or maybe, you know, the market will hit up here really quickly, but then quickly sell back off. Just depends how you want to look at the markets, guys. As I said, I, I can open the door to trade it. I can open and tell you how I do it, but I can't, I can't trade for you. So that's why on my Twitter feed, I won't put out, out signals, buy here with a stop loss here, because that's not going to help you. You'd just be copying me. If I say I think the FTSE is going to get up another 50 ticks in the next two or three hours, then you can make five ticks, 10 ticks, 20 ticks, 50 ticks out of it. Depends. How brave you want to be, but I can tell you where the market's going to go. But I can't trade for you. I don't want to trade for you. That just isn't my style. But you know, if you want to get the confidence yourself in trading, follow my methods. Follow the higher time frame trading. So look at it now. It wants to try and hit these highs. It's got two clear targets: the high here and the high here. Once it does that, there's only another 16 ticks to get to these top levels. So it can push all the shorts out. So again, guys, you know, it's entirely up to you. I'm not particularly bullish the euro against the dollar, so I'd stay out of it. I wouldn't be interested. I'd probably sell if the market got quickly up to this level up here. But I, I don't want to buy into that. Even though I know it's got a good chance of getting there, that's not the trade I want to do. I'd much rather let it get up here and then sell into it because that's my overall fundamental bias. And that's how you have to balance up the fundamentals with the technical style. Yeah, and if you don't like the look at the trade, even though it looks really good, don't do it. Or if you want to do it, put a two lot on it. Put really small size. So I just think this market, what it'll do is it'll look like it's going to get here really quickly and then it will reverse and be down here very, very quickly. Two whips, sorry, you know, two changeable. You know, again, you have to build your own view of, again, like I said, guys, I know the boundaries, the euro, euro dollar at some point today is going to hit 1338.9 or 1335.30. It can do nothing else. It will hit one of these. Okay, Ray. Yeah, I tend to ignore the four hours, to be honest. Um, I wish I'd give you a good reason why I do that. And I guess the, the reason would be that I've only got enough space physically to fit so many screens on, 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 a, on, a, on, a, on a layout. So I don't... I, I agree to some respect that you can use four hours, and I understand the good. You know, you get three good signals a day, but it's just not, it's just not something I've ever used, okay? I've always used 15 minutes on an hourly view and daily weekly monthly for my you know my higher time frame points of interest and exits uh, i don't really ever trade the four hours uh, people swear by it and people use it but to be honest it's not for me ray uh that's the only reason why i don't use it cause it's just not something i've ever used uh, i'm pretty sure these t techniques work exactly the same way in four hours yeah no, just don't get it, Ray. Just you know, I just don't, I don't, I don't use it. I prefer hourlies and I prefer dailies because dailies are finite. So you have to have an open and close. Hourlies, you're going to be able to stay in a trade. Who wants to check the charts every four hours and stay in a, a trade every four hours? I, I just don't. It's just too much time to wait. Too many things can go wrong in that. In an hour, you've got much more flexibility, much more time to average in or change your view. With four hourlies, you've only really got two chances a day to do that. So that's why I don't use them to honest way. But if you like them, exactly, you know, if you've got some, uh, you know, good analysis you can put around them, then yeah, you stick to them. All right, guys, well, I'm pretty much out of time at the minute. So, um, you know, again, 
there's always a lot to take on board. I mean, I, I try and get through a number of products and I try and give you my view of everything. Uh, very difficult to do in 45 minutes. So please join me for the, um, for the monthly webinar um, because I'll have a bit more time and I'll go through all these things again. And we can go through a lot of blank charts and I'll show you how you can do it from blank charts. Yeah. And again, guys, listen, remember, follow me on Twitter. I will put out these, these trades that I'm doing. I won't tell you where I get in exactly. So I don't think that's fair. But if I'm looking for a 20, 30 tick move, and you can get some of that just based upon my analysis, then you might as well follow it. Um, because I'm either going to be right and you make money, or you're going to be wrong. Uh, or, well, I'm going to be wrong, and you make money off that. But, you know, the trades have to be your own, guys. I'm not going to come on to FX Street and tell you that I'm some guru and all you have to do is follow my signals. I'm not about that. I'm about giving you the tools and benefit of my experience and you using it for your own trading. Okay? So I'm not a signal provider. I'm not anything. You know, I'm just trying to give you the benefit of my 10 years. And, you know, I've lost money over the years, guys. A lot of money. Okay? So just take that on board and, uh, and try and learn and not make the mistakes that I have. So, like I said, guys, there were plenty more coming from me on FX Street. I'll be doing the Fed minutes and the Bank of England minutes. Um... What else? Yeah, yeah, we're doing the higher time frame monthly webinar, so do look out for that. And anything else, guys, steveintrade.com. Well, in fact, just do Twitter, at Steve Rockley, on Twitter. Twitter is the best way to get hold of me. And if you need to send me an email, ask me, and I'll give you the right email to give me. All right, well, uh, many thanks to um, to Maud and Vicky and the guys at FX Street. Uh, been another great, great session. Uh, again, you know, low volume, so be careful. Be careful, because the markets can turn very quickly. But go away, start with the monthly. Yeah, go down to your weekly and daily, and then trade your hourly charts, and tell me how that works for you guys. All right? Okay, great to see you all guys. Have a great afternoon. I'll speak to you all soon. Thank you.